36 the difference now. He just wanted to split them up so that it wouldn't be easy to get the snooker behind and amazingly knock the black in. Still one snooker needed though. Nothing wrong with potting this red, and as long as he gets a highish valued colour, he'd only need one snooker. And look where the black is now to get a snooker behind. Needs to finish on a colour though. One. He would have liked to have left the black there. He may have to pot it now. Otherwise, I would prefer to leave the black there for snookering purposes. And that's what he's doing. And the black's in a good position to get a snooker behind. The blue's in a good position to get a snooker behind. This frame's not over yet. Seven. He can pop the yellow. If he wishes, without... Well, he's played in behind the brown, but I think he's hit it a little bit too hard. Ali Carp for seven. <laughs> you were saying, Dennis, that the black was in a good position for snookers. That's why I thought Ali might have potted the yellow and then played off the green to get up there. Well, <laughs> it's a good job he needed the snooker. The referee Ronnie wouldn't have liked to have to put those back. Frank well, the handshakes there, Frank. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. kept going manfully, but uh, O'Sullivan's grip on the title tightens. He leads by 16 frames to eight going into this evening's final session. So it looked like uh, Ali Carter might have a glimmer of hope there in that last frame, but the concession comes and it's Ronnie O'Sullivan. Two more frames he requires to win this title for the third time. And were he to win it for a third time, he'd be only the third man to do that at the Crucible. Steve Davis and Stephen Hendry, of course, have both surpassed that total. So Ali back to his dressing room, have a quick bite to eat. Wrong one, and he goes. <laughs> it's confusing times here. It's been a very long 17 days, guys. Um, on the balance of play this afternoon, five frames to three, Ronnie wins the session effectively. Um, there's not really any way back for Ali Carter, do you feel, guys? Time for the coronation tonight, isn't mm. it? Simple as that. 16 8. Can't possibly win from there. It'll be the, the biggest comeback in the history of sport if he wins from here. Um, he's, he's manfully was the word. He kept in there this afternoon, tried his best. And unfortunately, he's um, he's under the weather mentally at the moment, and uh, he's playing against well the best players to hold the queue. Indeed, yes. How much patience is Ronnie showing? Because things are not going all his own way. Well, it hasn't been pretty from Ronnie's uh, perspective, uh, or, or as Ronnie would not like it to be. Um, but you know, you don't have to be pretty to win. Uh, and perhaps when he needed to against Stephen Hendry in the final, in the semi-final, he sort of put put it all into that game. What he's done here is put in more of a bread and butter performance uh, and if your general standard is a lot higher than the other guy then that's all you need to do and that's been the story of the match it hasn't been the highest standard it hasn't been a hundred break after a hundred break there's been more mistakes than probably people expected mm. um, and sometimes uh, the players feed off each other and there'll be a hundred break hundred break hundred break all the time but the same can happen debilitatingly wise, some, one, all of a sudden one will, one will miss a shot, another will miss a shot, that can happen as well. But I, I think on, on the general point of, of patience as well, Steve and John, Ronnie's great strength and weakness to me seems to be is that he is a perfectionist and that can lead to a lot of frustration if you don't play to that standard. Yeah, 
he's, so that's the difference, isn't it? It's been the mm. difference for the last couple of weeks. I mean, he's come here, he's, been, he's looked focused on, from ball one to me. It looks like he's wanted to win this tournament, where sometimes he's gone to events and you can see his mind wandering, he's in the chair, he's fed up with him. I think that's a good performance for him because, as you say, he is a perfectionist. Mm. I mean, he'll be there now in this dressing room saying, cool, how bad was I there? But he's won the session 5-3 and he's 16-8. But, I mean, you know, this has been sort of roughly the same throughout the season for me. I mean, he's had occasional moments, but in the biggest tournament other than this, the UK Championship, yeah. he was on spot on throughout the whole tournament. Yeah. In the longer frame matches, Ronnie O'Sullivan is so hard to beat. It does put pressure on your opponent. Uh, the, the, all of a sudden, that guy's got to not only play good amongst the balls, he's got to play good safety. All parts of his game are tested to the nth degree. Ronnie O'Sullivan, in full flow, is such a handful. It's just so tough. He is, and you mentioned the UK Championship, Steve. That's played over 11 days, and we still saw that wonderful performance against Steve Maguire in the final to really crush the Glaswegian. Um, but this is a different kettle of fish. I don't know how to describe how long this tournament must feel to you when you get to this stage. I mean, physically, how debilitated do you feel by this point? It's, it's, it's mental. It's not physical, it's mental, it's yeah. purely mental, but you, you just don't know, you can't sleep. You're hyped after every match, you're going back to the room, you're there till two, three o'clock in the morning watching films and videos, anything you can do to try and get, get yourself to go to sleep. Then you wake a couple, up a couple of hours later because your mind's still whirring away. It, it, it's really tough, you only, you'll feel it, and about three or four days after the tournament's finished, you'll go wallop because that's what happens when he comes after it, because you just had all the adrenaline going and then you just fall in a heap. Mm. Ronnie O'Sullivan probably will win this. It's a when if and not if um, tonight. Uh, and probably in the interviews afterwards, he'll probably at some stage say like he, he's fallen over the line, as if he's feel like he sort of just got there by momentum. Uh, when we look at what he achieves on the table, it's better than that. But in his own mind, that's how he'll feel it's happened. Ali Carter will probably say, well, I just, I just, I don't know, I just, it went, oh, it, it, went. wherever yeah. it was, yeah. the bubble right burst. Out of yeah. The yeah. bubble burst, and all of a sudden, it just whatever I, I had, whatever grip I had on my game, somehow I lost it. He'll feel disappointed with himself, but then he'll look at what's going on and he'll and think, well, actually. That wasn't a bad little payday today. That's two hundred thousand pounds roughly in the bank. And that's not to denigrate Ali Carter because clearly he's still got a chance in this match if things go to plan for him tonight. But but overall, when we think about the achievement, should Ronnie do this of winning three world titles, what do you think it confirms in our mind about his pedigree and his potential in the game? For example, a hundred to one, I think it is, that he's going to go on to win eight world titles. That's what one bookmaker was quoting the other day. Yeah, I don't know about the odds for that because I don't really know, and probably he doesn't know how long he's going to go on playing anyway. We've seen all quotes and everything but for him to only win it three times would be an insult to the game he's mm -hmm. that good I mean he should be in the same ballpark as Steve and Steve Stephen Hendry and you're six and seven times winner because he's that good he is indeed yes and uh, you know John Higgins we said the same about him when he won his second I think this establishes Ronnie O'Sullivan if he converts this to being uh, you know one of the greats in the game and uh, from our perspective uh, that's fantastic OK, well, it could be a fight back. It could be a coronation. It looks likely to be that. The trophy looks like it's going to Ronnie O'Sullivan. We'll be back at 8 o'clock to see the final act in this year's Crucible drama. Do join us then. Bye for now.